being back and if I was turning in new stuff and then I told him yeah he said he saw some new stuff he heard some stuff and to explain but he wasn't sure what was going on and then we just started talking about doing something together and eventually he sent me um, a Phil Collins song and he asked me if I've, if I've ever heard this song and I was like no I've never heard this and I'm a Phil Collins fan <laughs> but I don't know this one and he was like you need to listen to this one and tell me what you think about it I listened to it and right away I connected my spirit connected with the song because when you hear the song it's a little different from what you normally hear from Phil Collins it had a lot of drum and a lot of beating in it and it was that type of song and it felt like John Gould was already in the song right. and then he started telling me how he years ago over 20 years ago he approached Colin McDonald to do the song for he telling Colin he wanted to do the song and they talked and he sent it to Colin and then some for some reason they couldn't find the right person to sing the song he didn't he didn't have anybody at the time who he felt could have done the song what he wanted from the song so they left it alone and he made promise he, sorry he made Colin promise that he wouldn't record the song because mm-hmm. Colin could have gone behind his back and recorded right and then I said, you know, we can try it. And he said, who do you think we can get to work on it? I said, well, it was, it was easy because I just completed <laughs> it. was easy, though, because um, it would only it would have been two main choices. Um, and Fred doesn't live anymore. He's in Alabama. So right away I said, well, Fred isn't here. And we want somebody who we could be a little more hands-on with. Because sometimes it's difficult communicating to get files and stuff like that. And I said, well, okay, I just finished some stuff for DMAC. I know DMAC can do a great job. And he said, I always wanted to work with him. I heard about him. He's the biggest artist in the Bahamas. And I would be thrilled to work along with him. And so I connected DMAC, sent him the song, asked him what he thought about it. And he loved it. And he could tell you the rest. So immediately when you heard the song, were you familiar with it? No, actually, I'm familiar with, with, with uh, Phil with Collins film, yeah. and most of his stuff, and yeah. especially the fact that he's a drummer and he's a rhythmic kind of guy. Mm-hmm. And I was I was always amazed at him, and he has amazing concerts. Um, that particular song, no, but man, when I heard it, I you, you could actually feel the essence of, of, of our music inside of it. And I was like, man, this is an easy one. In fact, when 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 I, when I got the song from M. Uh, I you know, we're in this COVID climate, I overnighted in the studio and I <laughs> I did what I had to do and I, I it was put, like I gotta get I gotta yeah. get this together <laughs> right Listen, away by the next morning I had the demo for them when I sent it to them they were blown away it was like yeah. wow we didn't even know you we were gonna get it back this fast and so did this gentleman did he put anything on on the track at all or he he's just, actually the guitar yeah. is on the he song he did play and it. because we decided that both of us were gonna partner in the song as far as paying for things and getting things and we were gonna go 50-50 um, that's why when people see the video or whenever I mention it his name is right beside me name because I think it would be a disservice to just push the sweet Emily out there and not give him the props because it's really his vision for the song. He just doesn't sing. Right. And he wanted to work along with somebody he was comfortable with. So I put him on the side and they were like, is he singing or what is he doing? Is he playing the guitar? You'll see him in the video. Amazing. His name is Herbert um, yeah. Swan Jr. We and so the, you uh, made his dream come true. Of course. And, and so a, he's elated. That's so great. What is also so good about it too is the fact um, because we have we now have technology and the ability to be able to send tracks back and forth and have him actually record his guitar tracks in Turks and Caicos and actually send the tracks, send the stems back to me and I insert them into the session and uh, here in the studio and as well as working with I mean this is the first time for me and we working with working with African um, artists as well on this project oh, and wow. so yeah South Africa I know Emma's gonna elaborate on it more but even with that them sending them recording their version that's crazy their music in Africa so this is almost like an international this song this is an international is song international. and then buy an international Grammy winning song right? this so, is crazy so you've yeah. got Phil Collins who's the writer of the song then you've got uh, your gentleman from Turks, Turks, and, Turks and Caicos, Caicos. The, the, the most popular guitars in guitars Turks. and Turks and then Caicos. you got the queen on the song then you got the king producer and king in general <laughs> and then you got so, South Africa and then you got the South African singers on this which is a choir called the Mazanzi African Singers um, there are so many choirs out of Saint Mazanzi if you pull it up because of the fact that Mazanzi simply means South Africa mm-hmm. so anything that says Mazanzi doesn't mean that they are the only choir so to differentiate themselves what they did was instead of calling themselves a choir they said African Mazanzi Singers because there's a whole bunch of them on, on, right. on social media so how did you connect with them Emily? Um, well this gentleman in Turks he has a vast amount of connections. This guy, you know, everybody. And what's he his connects. name again? His name is Herbert Swan Jr. He's a, like I said, Bahamian. Born in Freeport, Grand Bahama. Um, moved to Turks about over 20, a little over 20 years ago. And he has, like I said, a massive amount of connections. This guy, he also has a, 
son with a politician in Ghana. So he has a son that lives in Africa. Wow. And um, he has a lot of connections with, like, he told me he's connected to Drake from United States, Drake's producer. And see, because Turks and Caicos is a hub where um, they, their population is, they're like islands. You know, they got Turks, Grand Turk, um, Provo, mm-hmm. South Caicos, North Caicos, Middle Caicos. They're like uh, separated by water, but their um, population is only 35,000. And of course, they, they have a whole lot of what Dylan called, what you call them again, Dylan? They're like... Booty go down. Booty go down. Oh, yeah. Five star. Yeah. Yeah, no, so, a lot of the celebrities know, have been right, hanging so out there in the last, the last five, ten years mm-hmm. that's been the, the yeah, hot yeah. spot as well. Besides here, yeah. Yeah. that's the second the destination choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so as a result of him being able to, because he's in the band, it plays at Beaches, which is, I think, the biggest resort in Provo, and he moves around, and everybody knows everybody in Turks. Mm-hmm. Sure. So he gets to meet all the celebrities and their producers and whoever comes there. And what he does is he keeps their contact and, and he reaches like, out. Right. Yeah, he's big on networking. He sounds like he likes to connect, he likes which to is great. To me, I feel like his, gift, his biggest gift is networking. And connecting. He's able to connect people from anywhere in the world and all over the world. And it was really him who, he had his South African connection as a gentleman by the name of Mustafa. We call him Brother Moss, for short. And Brother Moss, um, he told him about the song that we were working on. As a matter of fact, there's a bigger song that he was working on, but he doesn't have the finances right now to deal with it. So he said, well, let's do this one as an open door, a stepping stone towards that. And this child, gentleman, um, Brother Moss, connected him with the choir because we thought that it would have been good to get an African chant on it. We wasn't sure it was going to be a choir or just a few singers. But it all makes sense. But it just happened that he was able to get us this choir. Because you've got the sound of the the, the Junkanoo drums, the beat, you know what I mean? It it all ties in. So I think this is just so Mm -hmm. cool. So um, we're going to play the song now because I think we need to play the song. We've we've now created enough anticipation. (laughs) 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 This is the exclusive debut of Sweet Emily's brand new single, Produced by the, our very own D-Mac, Dylan McKenzie. And uh, would you like to introduce the name of the song? The name of the song is Find a Way to My Heart. <laughs> To my heart. Brand new music. And let me tell you, that is absolutely incredible. Thank you. Love, love, love it. Oh, wow. Oh, love it. Coming from you, that's such a compliment. Listen, at the very beginning, when the choir kicked in, that's that was one of my faves. Yeah. To start it like that. You should that. see that video. When, them, yeah. uh, when they jump and listen. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely incredible. And then, of course, you know, the little... Uh, <laughs> So it was really, a, it was a really great experience recording it. He did a good job because when they send the tracks with the um, the chant and all that, we wasn't sure where we know it was gonna go somewhere in the front. But I liked how Dylan was able to masterfully put it all through the song. They so they just sent you the, the chant. Front. You didn't send them the music then. You just sent them the chant. No, I said, they, they had the music. They did have the music. They had the the. And the so, demo type. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we gave them um, total freedom to do exa- anything that they what felt, they wanted what to they do. Needed to, we didn't to know what they was gonna come up with. Right. So they gave us that, and because I, because we were working, you know, it's the motherland, and and for me, it's a big thing because <laughs> this this is the first opportunity to get to work with persons in in Africa. Um, well, not not for me, for my first, but you know, anytime we were we are able to connect and communicate with persons from the motherland and especially anybody outside of the Bahamas and really put products together so that we could kind of cross our yeah. cu- cross over it's cross cultures and, and well, we, we're, well, we're right. but it is the culture it's is our thing yeah, it, is, it our is our culture, our culture you know yeah. what I mean like John Canoe yeah, Trump, yeah, all of that you know all of that and so when you had, when you listen to the original you will definitely you can hear the similarities between both because we are we, we are that's but the our interesting gospel. thing it, it, it is is that the drum is what has connected Everyone. Right. Wow. Phil Collins. That's true, because Phil Collins has the drumming. We have the jungle. Yeah. Even the Africans have the choir. It's the drum. It's the drum. It's the African drum that is the foundation of all music from everywhere around the world. Absolutely correct. Oh, yeah. Absolutely correct. Of course. Every single type of music that's ever evolved has come from the beat of a drum. I don't know. Think about it. Think about it. I thought about it. I didn't even know that. Umoja. 
Got to check that out. Emoja, Gee. yeah. The history Emoja. of the drum. Okay. But the drum the drum is... is, is, is a central point. Is very, very. Yeah. And okay. it's amazing how it has just Gee. brought all of these fabulous cultures together on this incredible song, Find a Way Thank to My you. Heart. Wow. Sweet just Emily, D-Mac in the building, producer extraordinaire, yeah. performer extraordinaire. The queen is back. The so queen excited is to have you back. back. I got the king with me <laughs> Um, Ronnie and, gone, so I had to replace the king. Let, let, oh, gosh. But Kate, he'll never be replaced. I know, never. But um, let everybody know where they can find the single. Obviously, we're going to play it. Well, we definitely already have it uploaded to CD Baby. Hopefully, they were supposed to drop it yesterday on the officials. So hopefully, it's there. But, of course, with CD Baby, um, once you sign up with them, iTunes, everything comes under them. It's just a matter of some of those um, sites... It doesn't drop right away. Support it's Spotify, your local artists. artists. They're all on the yeah. I, um, CD Baby. Yeah. So you get Spotify, so Spotify iTunes, iTunes, Amazon. Amazon. Please, all folks, them come purchase that. the song. Yeah, yeah. Purchase the song. Baby, download it on your phone. phone. Yeah. 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 Look, there. folks. We this yeah. this is this is our this is this yeah. is our livelihood. This is how we make our money. I know purchasing songs is not a familiar thing in the Bahamas, but please understand that we are in a COVID environment. We have not been um, employed for over 15 months, so we're looking for the support of the Damn yes. people, this is not easy what we do, and it is costly for us to get inside studios and put and put, put this level up. But it's also it's for our, for our people. It's also just important to support support, support. the culture in that way. Yes. You know what I mean? Like I've always purchased, I always buy my yeah. iTunes songs. Like yeah. I, you know, you, yeah. you don't have a problem spending ninety nine cents on a Drake song, else, so right? spend ninety nine cents on I'm a not, sweet Emily. I'm not, I'm not I do have yeah. so yeah. I have a catalog of Bahamian Bahamian yeah. entertainers, and I'll co- crossing all genres. I just mm-hmm. believe in in supporting, and that's what it's all about. And that's what it is all about and it. I believe I mean for us we really want this song to JR his vision too is for the song to really go international that was one of the reasons why we thought it would have been wise that was a plus in adding also the Africans because the African in South Africa alone you're talking about millions and millions of people that live in Africa and even you know Africa is huge and so getting them on the song they're able to they're going to push it from their side and we're going to push it from our side and Turks and Caicos are already on fire just let me all know <laughs> yeah. I have like I have Alan Forbes on my phone. Yeah, Alan, yeah. I have Howard Dickinson, who was the DJ back in the day when I used to go there. He brought me over a few times, Lake Gardner. These are some of the senior and these are the persons who really everybody knows Turks are the persons who deal with music all of them on my phone I already sent them one fella's Emmanuel Nader you killed it so I love that he's like a skeptic he always he's criticized right. you my music he killed like, it I like this one that one was nice but that's only a fella I don't. I think you could have but this one he was like you literally killed it and so what we want is we really want to encourage Bama people to go on go on YouTube like it comment on the song because all it takes for a song to go viral it's, it's a comment the and a views like and people that and share subscribe. it and send it go yeah. that's what happened with Jerusalem you know it was mm-hmm. only a dance that's literally pushed that song right so let's push the video as well I love it. it find a way to my heart sweet Emily we appreciate you guys so much Thank D-Mac you. it was such a pleasure Thank to you. see you again always a pleasure to see you JJ yes and sorry just, again you just bring late. that ray of sunshine <laughs> so you bring that ray of sunshine every, every day when I come in here really. it's just like I know the sun is out but you know I have to put on my shades inside the studio yes I see you got your superstar shades yeah you know I go you know I just always <laughs> spiffy. Yeah, right, right. I had to match up with the outfit you are doing, man. You, 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 you talking about this? I got to compliment on that. One lady named Zay. Where that top girl on was? Listen, tell me. And let me tell you, I have to, I have to leave with my most favorite Sweet Emily song of all time. And you know, you know what it is. Oh yeah. Some days are favorite. Oh. Then you all know that. The greatest song ever. Okay. Hey. Ever. Right.